this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to at least start looking at model view controller and we're going to just create a basic framework for a swing application that uses model view controller. Now I'm going to really in this in this series of tutorials I'm going to concentrate on the design patterns themselves so I'm not going to go into swing particularly and I'm going to code a lot of stuff in swing outside of the video because I don't want to put swing related stuff into the video. I just want to concentrate on the design patterns and if you do want to know more about swing then certainly check out my uh, swing tutorial course which you can find details of, of at caveofprogramming.com. So, so having said that this is a Java project, project that I've set up in Eclipse and Let's imagine that I want to create some quite complicated swing program and it's sufficiently complex that I feel model view controller is appropriate. So if you're just doing like a really, really small application, then you probably don't want to go to this amount of trouble. And if you're creating some application which is, is maybe a bit bigger, it's, it's going to take you perhaps a few days to implement. Um, you might not necessarily want to go to the trouble of having a controller. It might not be um, really necessary, but you probably would want to have a front end and a back end because if you've got any data handling, even for a game or something like that, you want to separate out the stuff that deals with the data from the actual front end stuff. Now let's suppose you've got a swing application that has some complexity to it. And uh, most games certainly would fall into this category. For example, then you will probably want to use Model View Controller. And this, of course, applies to a wide range of other applications besides just swing applications. So I'm going to set up a package structure here because I want to put my Model View and Controller in separate packages. So I'm going to right click Source here and go to New Package. And first I'll create a base package to put everything in and you want that to be unique of course and since I've got the website caveofprogramming.com I'm going to reverse that and call it com.caveofprogramming like this and let's give it a well this is the design patterns course so I'll then say design patterns and this particular application is well it's uh, it's tutorial number five actually I think I've named that wrongly but um, let's just call this uh, demo one let's say I'll put this in package demo one okay so I might rename this later because I think this is the fifth video I made or I'm losing track so we've got a basic um, kind of root package there and I'm going to click finish and like this would be the the name of your application probably at the, right at the end there where I put demo one I'll click finish and now I could create separate packages for my model, model, my view and controller. And at the very least, you should have separate packages for your view and your model, probably. And I mean, OK, you don't have to, but you could just have um, separate classes all in one package. But the absolute best practice, if we're being picky, is to separate this stuff out into different packages. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go to new package and let's call this view. So this is going to contain uh, my user interface code except that I meant to make it, I meant to put it in this package. Let's just drag it and drop it. I don't think that's going to work. Okay so I'll right click that and delete it. Let's right click this and go to new package and I just want to say at the end here dot view. That's what I intended to do. And similarly, I'm going to right click this root package and go to new package and let's add on to here dot model. So this, this is going to contain my classes that deal directly with data. And for the last time, I'll right click and go to new package and let's put my controller stuff in here. And this is going to be my controller. And to be honest, I, um, I don't really usually go to this amount of trouble. I, I tend to miss out the controller myself when I'm writing swing programs. And I'm trying to think if the swing programs I've seen that other people have written have really gone to these lengths or not. But I think that once you get your head around this, this is indeed a, a very, very good thing to do because it is going to help make things 
a lot clearer, um, at least if you can understand some of the underlying concepts like the observer pattern, which we'll get into, for example. Now, in the view, we're going to have classes that are directly related to the actual view, the actual stuff that the user sees and interacts with. So let's create in here a new, um, just a top level window, and I'm going to fill in some stuff later on outside of this uh, video, but I'll right click and I'll go to new class. And you wouldn't necessarily call your top level view class view, and it wouldn't necessarily be in, in a root package called view either, but the important thing is the concept that this is going to be the code that interacts with the user, so it's the view. And to keep things simple for the purposes of illustrating design patterns, I think I will call this view, although normally the top level window I'd probably call something like main frame, but let's call it view. And I'll click finish. So we've got a um, class there. And I'm going to say this extends main frame. And sorry, extends J frame. I'm kind of thinking out loud. There we go. Now um, I'm kind of I'm kind of considering whether I should show you the swing code that actually creates the J frame in this tutorial or or not. Um, well, let's let's get on and create some other stuff actually for the moment. Um, and maybe it's better if I actually do the swing stuff outside this tutorial. Otherwise, these tutorials are going to bloat into a massive swing related thing and they're going to be massive. So that's the view and in this case it's a window and I would add kind of widgets of things to this window and I, of course I'd break this up probably into sub packages or at the very least I'd break it up into sub components. Now the model in there in this package we're going to have some kind of classes that deal with the data and for the moment, just to be going on with, I'm going to right click and I'm going to, going to create a new class actually called model. And once again, you wouldn't necessarily or even normally have a class called model. But in order to keep things straightforward, I will actually call my, um, I'll, I'll try to turn this into a kind of main class that deals with, that's kind of a one stop point for dealing with data in this application, this demonstration application. And I'll actually call it model to emphasize that it's the model. And finally, the controller. And once again, this package, which might not necessarily be called controller, is where you would put your business logic, your logic that isn't directly related to handling data and it's not related to deal, dealing with the user. So again, to keep things straightforward, I'm going to right click, create a new class, and I'm actually going to create a, a class that's literally called controller. There we go. So we've got three classes now, model view controller, and they're all in different packages. What we haven't got is we haven't got a entry point, we haven't got a main method. So let's create that. And I could put that, let's say, in in here, why not? So I'll right click this root package and create a new class. And I'll just call this let's call it application, because this is gonna kick the whole thing off. And you may have other main classes when you finish that run test code, for example, or you may have some JUnit tests or something, but I'll, I'll create a central kind of entry point here called application and I'll tick to say that I want to give it a main method. Now to, um, to kick off a main program uh, in Swing, and this is specific to Swing, you're supposed to use something called Swing Utilities in Vote Later. So I'm just going to code that little bit um, now, even though this is purely swing related, just to have something um, kind of a, an almost working application that I could show you. Let's say swing utilities.info later. And in there, I'm going to create a new runnable. And don't worry too much if this, um, if, if you can't get your head around this, because this isn't central to what we're doing. This is, um, kind of just me wanting to be able to create something initially that actually runs even if it won't do anything yet. And it's in here for a swing program in this run method in, of this anonymous class that we've created and passed to invoke later. It's in here that we put um, our main code, the entry point of our application. 
let's um, let's actually have a public static void method called something like run um, run application or just run really something like that actually I'll call it let's call it run app or it could be called create GUI or something like that it doesn't matter and I'm just going to call that I'm just going to call this from here so basically now this is my entry point and this is just some swing specific stuff that you won't need to worry about unless you're doing swing now what, what are we going to do in run app well we're going to create our model our view and our controller first of all let's create the model because the model is is completely independent of the other two classes or the other two packages the model should never never import any user interface any view classes it should not import anything from this view package and it shouldn't import anything from this controller package either um, or at least I, I, I wouldn't say so the, the model is a freestanding thing that you should be able to test independently so let's create the model let's say model model equals new model and okay I've, I've just got one class here literally called model which is not going to be normally the case but um, this will make things kind of straightforward I'll do control shift though and I'm adding my the import for my model here now we can create the um, the view and you see the view um, is a view of the model basically the view is showing you the data it's, it's representing the data somehow so the view is going to have to import classes from the model packages and uh, in this case if we've literally got one classical model we're going to have to pass a reference to that model to the view so we'll create the view and in the constructor we may as well pass in the model um, and by the way um, I said before that I've seen a bunch of different interpretations of this and I've created different interpretations of model view controller myself and what I'm showing you here is largely inspired by um, a stack overflow post that I saw um, by a guy called Nirmal it's like normal but with an I Nirmal, I don't know and he gave this little bit of demonstration code that I thought was very very elegant and uh, at least for a relatively simple application is, is really a good way of structuring it and that's what I'm showing you here although I'm not going to get into um, any any or any more of the code that he posted I'm just gonna but I'm gonna use his kind of demonstration of creating a model view controller and connecting them to each other at this point so we've got a view here and let's add the import for view with control shift O and I want to give my view a constructor that can now accept the model I meant to type model there my apologies so we're passing the model to the view that's the important thing so I'll go to view here and let's give it a constructor let's in fact I'm gonna to have to store um, a reference to the model in the view class so let's give it a private model model and this is this is absolutely fine this is normal it's a healthy situation that the view should have some kind of handle to the model because it has to in order to represent the model and I do control shift O to import the relevant package and now I can right click in Eclipse and I can go to source generate constructor using fields and tick model and click OK and I'll delete super there in fact no I won't because um, I want to call the, the version of the superclass for JFrame sorry the version of the constructor for JFrame that supplies the title of the application so let's let's put here MVC demo so this isn't anything to do with model view controller here um, but what is to do with model view controller is that I'm passing the model to the view and I'm, I'm just I'm storing a reference to it which again you might not have to but um, for our purposes here this is going to help so I'm passing the model to the constructor and I'm just storing I'm just keeping that reference in this private variable here I'm setting that equal to the thing that we pass in here 
let's let's go back to the the main application now. So we've got the model and we've got the view. Now, how about the controller, which is the the bit that I always think is hardest to understand. So I'm going to create a new controller. Controller, controller equals new controller. Now the controller sends commands to the model. Um, it tells the model what to do. So it's going to have to have a reference to the model. But the controller also can tell the view what to do. And the controller may listen to the model and it may listen to the view as well. In fact, it's almost certainly going to listen to the view and it may or may not listen to the model. And I'm going to, um, I, I was going to say that I'm going to write this so that it does listen to the model, but I'm not sure about that. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Maybe it will or maybe it won't, but we're going to look into uh, what it means for one component to listen to another or one class to listen to another a bit later on using the observer pattern. Um, so for the moment, uh, what you need to know is that the controller is definitely sending commands to the model and definitely sending commands to the view. That's what it does. So it's going to need a reference to, to both of them. And let's add the input there for controller. And let's go to, to here. And I'll give it a private view view member variable and a private model model member variable and once again I'll add the imports there so view there we go we've got model and I right click and go to source generate constructor using fields and tick view and model and there we go we don't need the super here in this case because the super class is object so the view is it's importing um, the controller is importing model and view. The the model doesn't import anything. Most particularly, it doesn't import anything from the view, and it's not importing the model either. I think I'm going to leave it there for this particular tutorial. And what I'll do is outside this video, I'm going to fill in some minimal code that will actually put a window on the screen. And I'll do that just by filling in some stuff in this view constructor so that we've got something to look at. And the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the observer pattern. So we're going to continue working with the model view controller pattern. But one thing that we need here is we need some way, certainly at the very least, for the controller to listen to the view. And we, we implement that using the observer pattern. So rather than just uh, implement that now and make an in enormous tutorial on MVC, which doesn't even explain the observer pattern, what I'm going to do is in the next tutorial, we're going to look at the observer pattern. And that's probably the pattern that gives beginners the most trouble. It it's, can be difficult to understand, but we'll break it down step by step and hopefully you'll see how it works. So that's it for this time, and um, you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com. I'll post it to Cave of Programming, and uh, until next time, happy coding. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't hesitate. If you have any doubts or question, leave a comment below. Hope you learned something new today. Subscribe to my channel for more.